Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is the first video you've seen on my channel, my name's Amber and I make videos on YouTube about reselling clothing on the Poshmark app. So the plan for today's video. First, I'm gonna go over a general explanation of Poshmark cases and Poshmark ratings. Then I'm gonna talk about two gen general types of business models and how those tend to correlate with cases. Then I'm going to be going into some specific cases and low ratings I've received and four lessons I've learned from those cases and low ratings. Okay, so first of all, some general back background on Poshmark cases and low ratings. So when you make a sale on Poshmark and the buyer receives the item, they can give you a review. And when they give you a review, they have to leave a rating between one and five stars. If they leave a rating below five stars, they have to choose a reason that they're not giving you a five star rating. And they also can include a note either if they give you a five star or a one star, they can leave a note explaining what they liked or didn't like. If they're really unhappy, they can open a case to return the item. They're not supposed to open a case unless the item was not as described or they didn't receive the item or something like that. They're not supposed to open a case if it's because the item doesn't fit or they don't like the style of the item. In general, I think there tends to be two ends of the spectrum when it comes to business models and what you should expect for cases. So one end of the spectrum are people who are very meticulous when they do listings. They are going to look very closely for any flaws. They're gonna take close up pictures. They're gonna include measurements. They're gonna to try to include every detail to avoid any low ratings or cases. On the other end of the spectrum are people who are focusing on listing quick. Get the items up, list as many as possible. They're going to tend, from what I've seen, to have more cases open against them because they just miss things more often because they're going so quickly trying to get things up. I don't think one or the other is necessarily better than the other. I definitely fall towards the end where I'm very meticulous. But the bad side of this this choice is that you're a lot slower at listing and time is money. The longer you take, the less you're making per hour. Whereas on this end, the bad side is you have to deal with cases. However, you get a lot more up and you might actually make a better ROI. You just have to deal with the cases on the back side. I think I fall on this end of the spectrum. I tend to take a lot longer to list things and I try to be very meticulous about disclosing anything that could be a problem for the buyer. That being said, I still have had cases and low ratings. So I have had 600 sales on Poshmark and of those 600 sales, 420 people left me ratings. Of those 420 ratings, nine of them were not five star ratings. And of those 600 sales, I had three cases opened against me. So now I'm gonna get into four tips that I have based on some cases and low ratings I've received. So the first three examples are going to be examples of where I made a legitimate mistake and I definitely deserved to have a case or a low rating. So the first example was when I sent someone the wrong item. Clearly that justifies getting a case open against you. I had multiple cabbie dresses and a size medium. I had two dresses that were blue and purple. I sent her the wrong blue and purple cabbie dress. She opened a case, said that she got the wrong item. I told Poshmark to approve the case. Poshmark paid for the return shipping and I created a new listing and I made a new sale to her. So I was only out the time that it took to reship everything and to respond to the case and I wasn't out any other money because of that case. So tip number one, Pretty obvious, make sure you send the right item. If you send the wrong item, you're gonna obviously have cases or low ratings or both. The second example where I made a legitimate mistake, a few weeks ago, I just was really busy with working and studying. And so I, I didn't even share my Poshmark listings for like four or five days. And it took me four days to ship out an item. And I got a four star review because of slow shipping time. So tip number two is to ship within two days of someone ordering something. People on Poshmark expect things to ship within two days. If you take longer, you're opening yourself up to low ratings. And the third example is I got a, I don't remember if it was a three or four star review, one of the two because the item was wrinkly when it got to the buyer. So since then, I created a system that I think might work better for making sure the items aren't wrinkly when they get to the person. So I steam the items, I photograph them, I measure them, and then I automatically inventory them. Before, there would be some time between listing and inventorying and I think that might be where the wrinkles occurred. However, I think this is one where even if you try really hard, things might still get wrinkled just because they're going through the mail, they're getting shaken up, like 
So I think that one might have been hard to avoid and, and I wouldn't get too down if you get a bad review and you tried your best to make sure it wasn't wrinkly. So tip number three to avoid bad reviews in cases is to disclose as much as possible. Obviously, the more you disclose, the less likely it is you'll have a bad review or have an upset customer. So the next five examples are all times where the customer didn't think that I had disclosed enough. So one person gave me a low rating because the boots were tight on them. Technically, they're not supposed to give bad reviews or open cases because of fit, but she did give me a lower review because the boots were tight. I didn't know the boots were gonna be tight. I feel like there wasn't much I could do on that one other than maybe have someone who wore that size try them on. Second example was someone received a pair of heels and said that the heels were not flat and that the heels were like at an angle. I didn't notice this. I definitely would have disclosed it if I had, but again, I just I try to disclose as much as possible, but you still might miss some stuff. The third example was I sold a dress that had a frayed neckline. I honestly thought it was supposed to be frayed, just like the edge of a skirt might be frayed or the bottom of shorts might be frayed. It didn't even cross my mind as something that needed to be disclosed, but the person received the item and gave me a lower review because they said that I hadn't disclosed that the neckline was frayed. And then the last two examples are the two other cases I've had open against me. Both of these are times where I think if I could have, if I would have fought it, I could have won the case, but I told Poshmark to approve the case and I didn't fight against it. So one was a pair of $90 boots that I sold and the heel of the boot, there was like a piece of leather that met a piece of fabric and the stitching in between had come undone. So it was still covered, but you could like flap up the leather. So I did write this in the listing and include a picture of it. But the buyer received the boots and said that because of the stitching missing, the boots, the, the rhinestones on the back of the heel rubbed against her heel and made the boots very uncomfortable to wear. Technically, I think I could have fought this and won because I did disclose that there was an issue and I showed a picture of it and I explained this. However, I told Poshmark to approve the case. I, I put myself in her shoes. If I was her and I ordered a pair of boots and I couldn't wear them, I spent $90 on them, I couldn't wear them because of this flaw, I would also want to be able to return them. And then the other case was I I had gotten this pair of jeans in a reseller buyout. And I remember even when I got them, I was like, these are not a 26. Like they looked way bigger than a 26. So I took the measurements and they measured way bigger than 26. So I listed them under uh, 32 because that's how big they measured. And then I included a picture of the size and I wrote in the listing, something to the effect of note that the size tag does not match the size this is listed under. I have included measurements. Please make sure you compare to a pair of your, your jeans to confirm that they fit. So the buyer received the jeans and opened a case against me saying the jeans aren't the same size as they're listed under. <laughs> so again, I think this is a time where I could have fought back and said, I disclosed this, I listed this. I specifically said, make sure you compare it to a pair of your jeans to make sure they'll, they'll fit. However, again, I put myself in her shoes and said if I was her, I'd wanna be able to return it. I actually had a time where something similar happened, but I was the buyer. I bought a pair of pants from someone and I tried the pants on and they had like stitching up the seam, the side seam, and it was like they stitched it with fishing line. Cause when I put them on and wore them, the um, fishing line, I guess it was thread. The thread like rubbed against my hips it made them so uncomfortable. I was like, I'm definitely not gonna wear these. And then I went to the listing and saw that they actually had disclosed that they had had to sew up the seam. So again, I put it herself in my shoes and said, if I was her, I didn't wanna be able to return it. Even if Poshmark says, you disclosed, so she's out of luck. I still felt like I wanted her to be able to return it. And then the last tip, tip number four, is even if you try your best and you really make sure you disclose everything, you're still gonna have cases open against you. You're still gonna have low reviews just know it's going to happen. So my example here is I had someone leave me a three-star review and their reason was other and they wrote, so sorry it took me so long to leave you a review. So I don't know if they were even upset about anything. <laughs> like I think maybe they just thought it was like how you rate a hotel or something where three star is like pretty good for a hotel and so maybe they just gave me a three star because they were thinking of it like that kind of rating. So again, you're gonna have cases in low ratings if you do a lot of sales and just know it's going to happen. 
um, and do your best to avoid them. So that is all I have for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel to see more Poshmark content. Also, feel free to share below what your guys' stance is on cases and how you respond to cases open against you. If you guys enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I am doing a giveaway right now on my channel of $150 worth of Amazon gift cards whenever I hit 10,000 subscribers. I just uploaded that video, so definitely go check that out and enter the giveaway if you're not already. Thank you guys all for watching and stay tuned because as always, I will have a new video out soon. Mm -hmm.